Okay, hello dear friends, good afternoon. Let's continue page 179 of A Dream of Red Mansions. Jia Zhen arrived the following day to take care of some business. One of their tenant farmers had brought over some fresh meat, vegetable and fruit and Jia Zhen instructed Zhou Rui to look over the delivery before taking it inside. When the receipt was checked, however, Bao Er, who walked in the kitchen, suspected that Zhou Rui had stolen some of the goods. Zhou Rui and Bao Er began to argue, and Jia Zhen had to break them up and lead Zhou Rui away. Bao Er and Jia Zhen, they were fighting. It was not long, however, before Jia Zhen heard shouting, Jia Zhen heard shouting in coming from near the gate, and a servant soon told him that Bao Er was now fighting with Zhou Rui's adopted son. Then Jia Lian appeared and was told that, uh, and then Jia Lian appeared and then was told what was happening. He was appalled and ordered for Bao Er, Zhou Rui, and Zhou Rui's son to be tied up. Jia Lian dealt Zhou Rui a few, a few hefty kicks. Jia Zhen ordered, ordered the servants to give both Zhou Rui's son and Bao Er 50 strikes with the whip. With the whip, get out later. The servants were confused about the, these orders and in private argued about whether Jia Zhen was biased or whether he had ordered them to be so harsh with Bao Er because Bao Er's wife won't oblige Jia Zhen as she did, as she did Jia Lian, so now he's taken it out on the husband. Mm. So Jia Zhen was unfair because of the family, because uh, Bao Er was not obey, obeying his wife. Mm, so it's a family affair and, uh, and make the judgment kind of unfair. Okay, I will not make too much judgment. Jia Zheng. Jia Zheng's new promotion brought many perks and gifts for those in his household. When Jia Yun learned about this, he brought some uh, expensive clothes to Xi Feng to try and persuade her to mention him to Jia Zheng. Since he wanted to be involved in the project to build the imperial burial chamber, which Jia Zheng had, which Jia Zheng had responsibility for, Xi Feng told him that she might have some, she might have some say on other matters, but not on this matter, since these government jobs were allocated by the officials and their secretaries. Other people could hardly get a, a look in. Wang Xifeng, so try to persuade. Just then, in came some nannies with Jiao uh, with Qiao Jue Qiao Jue in come with nannies with Qiao Jue Qiao Jie, Qiao Jie, Qiao Jie, Qiao Jie. <coughs> anyway, Jia Yun got up to greet her. 
Jia Yun got up to greet her, but as he did so, as he did so, Chao Jie began to cry. Is this Chao Jie? It seemed that Chao Chao Jie, oh Chao Jie, just then, in came some nannies with Chao Jie. Jia Yun got up to greet her, but uh, as he did so, Chao Jie began to cry. It seemed that Chao Jie could not look at Jia Yun without bursting into tears. Jia Yun realized it. Jia Yun realized it would be difficult for him to stay, so he made his excuses and left. Xi Feng told him to take the expensive clothes with him, since there was clo the, since there was nothing she could do at this time. Though she would inform him when an opening appeared. How smart. Page 181. During the tenth month of the year, it's October, during the tenth month of the year, the weather suddenly became unusually cold. Xi Ren gave Bei Ming, Xi Ren gave Pei Ming, Bei Ming, Bei Ming a cape to take to school and give to Bao Yu, and give to Bao Yu when he needed, when he needed it, needed it. Yet when Bao Yu finally took it, unfolded to wear, he stopped in his tracks. He stopped in his tracks and all the other students around him began to stay to stare. It was the cape made from peacock feather, which Qing Wen had fixed, which Qing Wen have had fixed when it had got a hole in it. After he put the cape on, Bao Yu opened a book to read, but found he could not concentrate on a single word. He stayed like that all day without the teacher noticing. But when the lesson had all finished, Bao Yu asked Dai Ru for a day's sick leave. For a day's sick leave. So Xi Ren knows the weather is getting cold, so ask Bei Ming to brought some capes. And Dai Bao Yu opened up the cape and was shocked. Everyone was shocked. And this was made of a peacock feather. And this used to have a hole. And Qing Wen, in the previous pages we have read, Qing Wen has mended that hole. Wow. Page 182, Bao Yu stayed at home the following day and had Qing Wen's old room cleaned. Then he lit some incense and laid out an offering of some fruit. When he was alone, he said a quick prayer and began to write a poem on a pink piece of paper that he had saved for the occasion. The final lines of the poem read, River driving east cannot turn and return to the west. Just as I young for you but cannot bring you back to life. When I see the purple cloud cape, my heart fills with a pain I cannot escape. When he had finished writing, Bao Yu set the paper alight. 
and watched it shivered up as it burned. Pao Yu stayed at home and made a poem. Maybe this is Pao Yu made a poem. Hmm? He asked one day. Pao Yu then made his way to the bamboo lodge. When he found Dai Yu at work copying out a sutra, this is Dai Yu, Xin Jing copying a sutra, Pao Yu mentioned that he had heard her practicing on the lute a few days ago, a few days before, but admitted that he could not understand the tune. In response, Dai Yu said, there have been few people throughout history who have heard any, who have heard and truly understood. At that, Bao Yu was afraid that he might have offended her, so kept his mouth closed. There were a thousand things he wanted to tell her, yet he could not find the right words. So they both ended up sitting in silence. Page 138, after Bao Yu had left, Dai Yu wondered why he had spoken so ambiguously and try to work out what he had meant. Eventually, she retired to her bedroom and lay down to try and puzzle out his words. Outside her window, Zi Juan bumped into Xue Yan on the steps. Xue Yan Xue Yan said she had learned from some of the other servants that Bao Yu had become engaged to a local perfect's daughter. To a local perfect's daughter. So this is um, um, Zi Juan and uh, Xue Yan. They were chatting, and Bao Yu uh, and Dai Yu heard that Bao Yu, the boy, is getting engaged. When Dai Yu overheard this piece of news, she felt as if her heart were being churned in the stormy ocean. It also seemed to fulfill the prediction of the dream she had recently. She had recently had, as her mind filled with sorrow and anguish, she decided that all she could do now was die. When she reached this decision, she lay back and pretended to sleep without bothering with any blankets. So the weather is getting cold and she wanted to die, so she slept without putting on any blanket on her. So. Page 148. <clears throat> True to her word, Dai Yu soon became seriously ill while she was lying in her bed. <clears throat> she once again overheard Xu Yan from outside her window, this time talking to Shi, to Shi Shu, to Shi Shu. Shi Shu, Shi Shu, talking to Shi Shu. They were talking about the match and discussing the new piece of gossip that it had not, in fact, been agreed upon and that the Lady Dowage had said that she would prefer to choose a member of the family from among the cousin's court to be his bride. Dai Yu suddenly felt uplifted, for surely, she thought, the Lady Dowage must mean her. 
<clears throat> Xi Feng was walking in the court one day when she came across an old woman causing a fuss. Xi Feng began to reprimand her, but at that moment, Xing Xiu Yan, Xing Xiu Yan came outside to ask her to forgive the old woman, since it was her maid's fault. Xiu Yan explained that she had lost a red jacket, and her own maid, unable to find it, has asked the old woman about it. Xi Feng saw that Xiu Yan was only wearing some old threadbare clothes, and so once she got back to her own quarters, Xi Feng sent Feng, Feng Er to send Feng Er to take her some new clothes. Xiu Yan, Xiu Yan would not accept the gift but give Feng Er a gift of a pouch of her trouble, a pouch for her troubles. Give, but give Feng Er a gift of a pouch for her troubles. However, when Ping Er was then sent to convince her to accept the gifts, to accept those gifts, Xiu Yan at last relented. So Xi Feng saw she has some clothes and give her some pouch, give to Ping Er little clothes. A little bit confused. <laughs> Page 185. Meanwhile, Jing Guo had been trying to take over Aunt Xue's entire household. When some of the servants told them what had happened to Xiu Yan, Bao Chai and her mother felt deeply saddened. Your fiancé's family has fallen in hard times. And Xue, your fiancé's, uh -uh. and Xue said to her nephew, Xue Ke, you, we must arrange the wedding as soon as possible so that everyone can stop worrying about it. Xue Ke returned to eat his dinner in his own room, where he thought about Xing Xiu Yan and felt sorry for her difficult life over in the court where she was often ignored or treated badly. At that moment, Bao Chan, Bao Chan came in. Bao Chan, Bao Chan came into his room and put a hamper on the table. My mistress asked me to give you these sweet meats and a bottle of wine. She said later that night, when Xue Ke was getting ready for bed, he heard laughter coming from just outside his window. He decided to ignore it, so blew out the lamp and got into bed. I can't believe someone could be so foolish, he heard someone outside said. Outside say. Though he was unsure whether the words had been spoken by Jing Gui or Bao Chan, he was sure that they were up to something wanted to sleep and heard something and Page 186, since the previous plan had not in 
ensnared 学科 has had not ensnared 学科，金贵 set about thinking of another way to catch him out. In the end, it was Bao Chan who formulated a new plan. The next morning, when Bao Chan entered Xue Ke's room, Xue Ke's room to take back the hamper, she made sure that her clothes were loose and her long hair hung down around her shoulder. Oh. She hoped that this would be enough for him to show some interest in her, and so get caught in their trap. However, Xue Ke remained courteous and polite. Bao Chan was left looking annoyed as she packed away the leftover sweet meat. Yet. She deliberately forgot to take the empty bottle of wine away, so that she would have a, a reason to come back later. So she took away. She came to clean up the room, but she was not, you know, yeah, loosen up her clothes and loosen up her hair. And、uh, took everything, took the sweet meat, but left. Okay, so she had taken away everything, the sweet meat, but she hasn't taken away that、uh, bottle of wine, so that she can come back later on, come back again. And uh, uh, just uh, a side note about this sweet meat. And、uh, in China, the, the, there is a particular way to preserve meat. In other country, there is a sausage, salami, worst, and a different way of making the preserved meat or treatment of meat. Sweet meat is a kind of meat that uh, that uh, uh, put sugar, put wine, preserved. If you have eat Chi, if you have eaten. Chinese stir fried rice. Some of it has this sweet sausage. That Chinese sausage, it made of white wine, meat, some fat, meat fat, but it's already preserved. It's already salted, and not too salty. Just the right amount of sweetness, saltiness, wineness. And、uh, it's very delicious, actually. And、uh, not everyone can make it so good. It's a, it's a, a, a particular tradition. Anyway, this is an explanation of、uh, the sweet meat. Hmm. 甜肉